host, anyways. How about Tom host this time? I already put Tom? nope. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. That's <laughs> it's a, it's sports draftkings.com. The following episode is not sponsored by DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Uh, there was music and uh, sponsors in that intro. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we, we got copyrighted already. Well, I, got. I, I does YouTube yeah. really claim Heinz Kissling though? That's the only thing. I don't think so. No, they they will claim it if it whoever made it. So the music can be in public domain, but whoever played the original music will claim it because that's mm -hmm. how greedy everyone is that's how the world works comes, that's how the world works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think yeah. if i want to say play, his works are in um, so who's the hosting of... this episode or... i put my finger on my nose before I put my finger on my nose. I crushed you know it. what it feels right that i host this episode only mm -hmm. for the fact that the orlando magic will be picking the first overall y'all see the jersey the first overall pick Eight o'clock, it's happening. But before we get to that, I guess we'll just start. What is that jersey? Oh, this is our our city jersey, the alt. Oh, yeah. the city yeah. jersey. It looks pretty uh, fresh. I Disney sponsor. 2019. Yes, it's very nice. Disney. But we'll start with NHL. Okay, we'll start five tree. Brandon Perna, were you guys watching this game? Game four. NHL Stanley Cup Finals. It went into Ooh, overtime. USFL. Let's get some rapid reaction. Brandon Perna, you're an Avalanche fan. Tell me what you saw. Go. I saw the Avs not having enough men on the ice, and they still won. I'll tell you what I did not see was that puck going into the goal. Uh, I was fooled, like everyone. Yeah. It actually got stuck up in the top corner. Yeah. That's where it was. I – uh. I just thought like I I'm very insecure when I watch hockey because I'm like not super knowledgeable. And so I reacted thinking it went in and then I was like, oh, it clearly didn't. I'm just an idiot who doesn't <laughs> can't watch the game correctly. And everybody luckily everybody was tricked. Everybody was fooled by well, that it also, goal. Yeah. And the poetry of it being Nas coming in to hit that game winner after oh a great postseason postseason he gets injured gets thumb surgery two weeks ago shouldn't even be playing and he is the guy the hero the former villain turned hero like a Star Wars caricature five That's set us up you also saw the game last night for those who may not know the lore behind what's going on right now can you set us up what's going on in this stanley cup finals it's game four avalanche are up three one set the story for us listen uh, every this is what i hate about the playoffs is they all say this game is must win right like every game every in game the is playoffs must is must win and the lightning really really yeah. needed that win to even the series if they want any hope of winning this and uh they came out strong they had a 2-1 lead they had a one nothing lead they had a 2-1 lead they gave up a goal late now this yeah. and the this is, goal was kind of fluky it actually yeah. just punched off copoliano a little little fluky the second goal to tie it up but here's the thing if you don't have the puck and you're just letting colorado take all the shots that they want it was a very bold strategy to start the overtime <laughs> by letting Colorado camp in their zone and just take shots at the okay, net. Okay, here's my let me, let me here's my defense. Here's my before they you were interject bold tree, before you get that interjection tree, this is what I was seeing. I just saw that this was a lightning team that looked tired. They look gas. You're coming off a team, a Colorado Avalanche team. They've been rested. They've been waiting for you. 
tree does that play into effect at all a little or bit or also have to remember they played more hockey than anyone else in the last three years they've i mean if you count the last three seasons they played probably 20 games a piece maybe more you're looking at almost an extra season worth of games intense games and also don't forget they only had five defensemen in that like overtime as well chernak was out i believe in the second period Plus, I think Sorelli was nursing an injury. Nick Paul was nursing an injury. They're banged up. I mean, unfortunately, uh, the toll of having, you know, the physical toll of paying for those Stanley Cup victories, unfortunately, is starting to come into effect. And, I mean, Vasilevsky's playing his damn heart out. But at the same time, there's not much you can do. And, by the way, that was 545. I know uh, the D word is uh, technically in the Bible. So, you know what? That 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 passes. The, the <laughs> other thing is now they're down 3-1. They they tried to get that two one lead and rely on Vasilevsky, thinking that that would hold up, and that just that's not the NHL now. You can't really sit on a two a one goal lead because not against it's going to break. Yeah, not against the Abs. I and had, fortunately, let's give Darcy Kemper some love for showing out last night. Lots of criticism, especially locally. People here in Denver were calling him the Trent Dilfer of goalies, the Brad Johnson of goalies, these hot take artists. I'm going to tell you something. Kemper played well. Um, As a Lightning fan. Also, okay. Abs had some injuries too. So let's Yeah, I mean, there. everyone's beat up right now. I mean, it is a war it's the playoffs, but I mean, the only the one that really up here, you guys, is Kadri. You're going to have to overcome injury. No, I mean, not Kadri. I mean, uh, Gerard. Gerard. Burakovsky out as well um the bolts perspective though okay i'm a lightning fan we're on year four of being a bolts fan here's what i saw i saw us coming out fast we came out to play scoring quick and then all of the sudden period two happens and it seems like we just we just slow down for whatever reason we stop the attack and we just slowed down, and we allowed Colorado to begin to attack us. And honestly, it never let up since then. We never countered since the second period. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this series plays out. Can the Bolts win three games in a row? Yes or no, no. urinating tree. No. Go to go to urinating trees video uh, and make sure you like my comment that says abs in five. When he predicted I, Tampa to win, and it's going to uh, happen here in five. I don't agree with Can that. Can the Tampa Bay Lightning win three games in a row, yes or no? No. Uh, no. Tree and I also had a bet that uh, I said I took Colorado in six. Mm. Tree took the Lightning in six, and he has to eat a banana on stream live <laughs> and make contact with everyone, make eye contact with everyone as he does. Uh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So I got I gotta slick the mm -hmm. hair back too. Okay, so yeah. we'll Are see you... how that we'll see how that plays out. Brandon Perna, will the Tam can the Tampa Bay Lightning win three games in a row? It Anything can happen out. in sports, and I'm not gonna be the guy who sits here and says that it's absolutely impossible for those jokes, those jokesters, those complainers. To go out and win three in a row against the greatest hockey team, many are saying in the last hundred years, the Colorado Avalanche. So, <laughs> okay. Listen, sure. I believe we're going to get it on record. Mm. Bolts in seven. Anything is possible. Let's go. I Let's believe get the O2 Red Wings have something to into... say about that. Say it again. I believe the O2 Red Wings have something to say about that. Okay. Mm, say is that the only 76. team to ever come back from a three to one? I think the odds. I, I remember I researched this. No one, no, when a one team came back from 03 in like 1926 or some crap yeah, in the cup and, final, but not yeah. in the modern era. Yeah, not in the modern era. I think only maybe twice a game seven has even been forced in the final. So you're the listen, odds statistically listen. are way against you. Listen, dudes. anything is possible. Anything, is, anything possible. is possible. Let's get Tom back in this conversation, though. Let's switch over to NFL. We have Gronk retiring. Let's start there. Gronk's oh, out of here. Is he, But we did see that he made a tweet saying, if Tom Brady needs me. I'm there. I'll come out of retirement for this man. What are we thinking here? Rapid, rapid reaction. Gronk retires. Tom, do you care? Does anyone care? 
I think he is arguably the greatest tight end in NFL history. And uh, I am not convinced that he's retired <laughs> because like, I feel like if the Buccaneers are a playoff, like contending team in like November, December, Brady can pick up the phone and Gronk is be like, all right, I'm not doing anything else. And then he's just going to like show up to practice one day because that's how Brady runs the organization. So you said Gronk might be the best tight end ever. Is that true? You believe that in your heart? Yeah. I mean, there's other tight ends that we could talk about, but I mean, the Gronk, like a prime Gronk was literally unstoppable. Let's, let's put this for the question of the day. Uh, chat, let us know who is your I mean, best I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. Dude, ever. him and Aaron Hernandez killed the competition. Dude. <laughs> okay. All right. I feel 16 like it's touchdowns like touchdowns combined their rookie season. Listen, I'm like, a they were all over the place. I've heard yeah. all of them. Every they joke you have to say, I've heard it three. I wasn't even trying to joke. I was I just saying not. they did. Look, Tony Gonzalez was amazing. Like Tony Gonzalez is top I ten. Got Tony Gonzalez up there. You got Antonio Shannon Gates. Sharp. Yep. Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp for sure. You got to Jason Witten's in that conversation. Witten is in the conversation. Kind of hey, Kellen uh, Winslow, let us know, chat. Who's Mike your best Ditka. tight end? Uh, but five. Do we? Do we think this man is going to be retired? Do we think he's going to come out of retirement? What are the Gronk vibes right now? I mean, he's already quit like twice now. Maybe he's just tired, but I think this is a ploy to get him to skip training camp. You know how they, you know how the older players are just like, I don't want to practice. Just, just let me go out on, on Sunday and play. I think this is what he's doing. He's just like, I'm going to retire. Mm. And then on September 8th, whenever he's going to be like, all right, I got to get in shape because he's a freak of nature. I don't think he actually even gets in shape. I think he just shows up and he's like, I'm the greatest tight end ever. If I could interject, I found it so interesting when we saw like he lost so much muscle mass one year. Do you guys remember this? Like, we yes. Saw a picture and he just looked like how I look basically right now. Just all, lost a whole bunch of muscle mass. I don't know. Do you think this has anything to do with it? Maybe. Uh, I don't think- know. All Gronk has to do to get into football shape is he just cuts his alcohol consumption in half. <laughs> he just halves it, and he's like, okay, "Yeah, yeah." I'm he's like, "All right, and then yeah. he's in. let's go to in-season drinking." Okay, not off-season. We continue with some more NFL news. Deshaun Watson settling twenty out of the twenty-four cases. What does this mean? Why do we think he settled it now? Has someone said? Yo, you need to do this or you're not playing. And then I saw some other tweets saying this man's getting suspended for a year no matter what happens. What are you guys seeing about the Deshaun Watson case? What's been going on? What are you hearing? Anyone want to take this first? I just want to say congrats to Deshaun Watson for completing level one of this, um, of his great adventure. You know, 20 out of 24 uh, you know, low level bosses right there. He, he got it done relatively quickly right there, but now he has four big bosses coming up. Mm-hmm. Then after he gets past that level, he's got the NFL to deal with the final and boss. Then, uh, and then he's got to actually play football. So, he need- I mean, congrats to him and his legal team for, mm-hmm. uh, for getting past level one. Yeah. He, he needs to grind in the uh, early game. Uh, that would really yeah. give him a big advantage. But ha- like, what have you guys actually heard about this? Like, do you guys know why all of the sudden the this case was just? Settled? He's been trying to settle it for a while, actually. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know this or or this is what you guys have have said about it. He had tried to. He wanted to get it all done at once. And yep. he was like, look, I'll give everybody a hundred thousand, whatever, two hundred thousand. These last four, I guess, maybe something more egregious happened with these last four where they're like, fuck, excuse me, fun, <laughs> funny that you asked, Deshaun. We don't want your money. We want a lot of your money. And so I, I think that these four might have a more or they're just they're just angrier at him. I don't know. We'll never know the details of these first 20 yeah. because. I'm they sure will honestly expunge it. They'll expunge it. Yeah. And like NDAs. Anything, all the NDAs, it's it's all speculation and untruth now. He's that's why I'm saying he he they he pulled a coup. And uh, I guess he's probably every day that goes by, things are getting worse for him. And 
he just wants to get it done. That's fair. Uh, we're having some technical issues with my video, but we're going to keep this conversation going. Tom, what have you heard about this settling with Deshaun Watson? Why do you think this is taking place? I mean, why right this second? I feel like there probably was some internal pressure from the Browns organization. They're like, hey, there's uh, these things are coming out every week now. If we could uh, try to just, you know, maybe just take out half of them, uh, you know, that, that'd be great. And instead, they settled with 20 out of 24. Wasn't there a time where Deshaun Watson was like, I'm never going to settle, though? Yeah. I think, there was a, I think yeah. that happened a couple that's times. So that's welcome to criminal awkward. investigation. Uh, but yeah, the so beginning. there's four left now. But I I mean, it's far from over because the things that I have read is that the fact that he settled it is not really going to have an impact on his punishment because his punishment is going to be his punishment. So I think it's going to be a full season. And then I think the... Browns are praying that in that year, whatever happens, whether they're so crappy or what have, which by the way, the Texans would love if he got suspended for a year and the Browns get like a top 10 yes. draft pick because of it, mm -hmm. they'd be yes. very happy. But I think ultimately Watson is going to uh, have himself a time, but the Browns are hoping that in a year, no one's going to remember. <laughs> Especially mm -hmm. considering Baker Mayfield rumors to Seattle are starting to heat up a little more. Oh, so, I mean, it's only a matter of time before Mayfield is traded. So let's go there. Let's just, he's gone. let's go. Wait, wait, one, one, one last thing before we go. Let's close it out. Five. My biggest thing that I would find so funny is if when Watson finally gets on the field that, they that cleveland sucks that they, they are just terrible. just terrible like yeah that they win four games with him or something like they go four and 12 four and 13 or they win three games everything looks great and he tears an acl just out of hey, you, know, you know what i'll be fine right. with it as and they're a, right know, back to square team, one with it. in a hilarious karmatic um sign of justice. It's like they're how Tyreek exactly, Hill got no suspension yeah. in 2019 and then he gets injured out for six games anyway. So it kind of felt like his suspension. So yeah, what needs to happen is if he comes back to play, um the Browns are exactly as good talent wise as the Texans were when he <laughs> wanted out of Houston. Like yep. Miles Garrett uh decides to just retire early. Nick Chubb <laughs> leaves in free agency somewhere else. Denzel Ward uh, decides he doesn't want to play for the Browns anymore. So it's just like the same talent level. And then, yeah. sure, whatever else after that. Or like Amari He's Cooper is like the, the greatest wide receiver in the league this upcoming season, and then mm -hmm. they trade him to Arizona for a second-round pick. Yes. Just yes. come full, just come and, full circle. <laughs> well, Watson suspended for four years, and he comes back, and J.J. Watt is still trying to play on defense for them. Yeah. If we have Amari Cooper back for a fifth round pick, just let me know. Like I can nah. coordinate. I you don't I have, have the cap for it, brother. I have nope. some phone numbers. No, nope. that's why. Well, he let's got continue. Traded. We're gonna stay with the Browns. Okay. The Browns have made a lot of people upset by taking this quarterback into Sean Watson, trading for him. Number one being their current quarterback, Baker Mayfield, the only quarterback who's won a playoff game for their organization in the past 797 years. They've managed to upset this man. What are they going to do with him? Uh, Tree, what, how do we think this resolves? What the heck? He's, he's going to be on a different uniform by the start of this year. There are more rumors popping up about him going to Seattle. They are highly interested which means that they're going to sign him immediately once he's cut because there's no way they're going with drew Locke and geno smith as their two starting quarterbacks unless they're just straight up tanking for a quarterback you have no next faith year. in geno Five. and then carolina's always been in those rumors as well maybe a, a sleeper team's in there too but at the same time like the 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 line between baker in Cleveland, it's kind of like this. You have this nice line. There's a bridge over. Everyone's riding around, and then the entire bridge collapses on itself, oh, and man. then everyone falls into a horrible chasm. That is how Cleveland and Baker Mayfield is going on. And the sad part is, once again, we wouldn't be dealing with the situation if Baker Mayfield was on IR instead of playing with a messed up shoulder that messed up his throwing mechanics. So and I wanted saying... to say the F-bomb so bad, but I didn't. <laughs> Give me my money now. I'm All right, Green. <laughs> so are we – okay, That that's fair. That's fair. Brandon. Where is Baker Mayfield starting this football season? Game one, what, where is this man going to be? Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Okay. You know what's okay. this is what I don't understand. Tell like, me. The Browns obviously want to get something for Baker Mayfield, right? They they gave up everything to get Watson, and now they can't get anything for Baker. Apparently, the Panthers were still interested, but the Panthers didn't want to pay enough of Baker's salary to make the Browns happy. The Browns have like forty-one million in cap space right now. They have the second most in cap space, so I don't understand why they won't eat the majority of his contract just to get this issue off their their plate. Uh, unless they think they can convince Baker to actually play, uh, which man, I would I, love. I'm oh, sorry, the best Baker joke of the show. Them, if Baker was like, you know what, guys, water under the bridge, I'll play, and he just chucks the ball into the ground for every single play. Oh, sorry, and he would guys, still have a better quarterback rating than Baker did in certain games this past. <laughs> Baker is such a gamer; he wouldn't do that. He no, would not. But it'd be he a mate. Like he's, he's WWE style, like he throws a pick the first play, it's a pick six, and he rips off his jersey to reveal the opposing team's jersey. Like, let's go full soap opera because why not? Heel. Um, yes. well, so, what's gonna happen is uh, he's gonna let Nick Chubb get killed in the backfield, and then he's gonna bring out a black spray can and then write NWO <laughs> all over him, and then just like reveal that he's Hollywood and just air guitars off the guys. field. Right. So, Tom, right. you're, you're gonna have to believe beard. that. Baker Mayfield is not playing another game in his lifetime for the Cleveland Browns. Oh, God, is that correct? no. Oh, God. I mean, they brought in Jacoby Brissett, I think, because they understood there was no way that Mayfield is going to play for them. I think it's a matter of wanting to get something for him. The contract is sure to be an issue, but I think the Browns have come to realize that they have no leverage here whatsoever. I mean, because if you're the Seahawks, Right, you have Geno Smith, you have Drew Locke. I'm not saying you're going to be good, but Baker Mayfield, I don't think is bringing them to the playoffs either, because I think that the Seahawks just need some help that's more than just at the QB position. So they could not do so well this season, get a really great draft pick. It's a good QB class next year, and then swing with that. And it's the same exact thing with a lot of these other teams. The Panthers could do the same thing. I know they just drafted a guy, but there's that's options right. for those teams out yeah. there. Yeah, Maddie, Maddie C. Yeah, the Seahawks. Uh, I feel like need a quarterback this season yeah. more than the or, uh, the Panthers, but that's the only well, way. I the Panthers also Seattle. remember they're not throwing out Sam Darnold again. I mean, you can't. <laughs> Why can't? Um, Andrew? But what, what, I, I know he says that he's a capable NFL quarterback that he can do what he wants, and there's nothing wrong with full confidence. But we saw you play after those first three games. It was it was bad. They threw you out for a burned out Cam Newton with a shoulder made of ramen noodles. I will say ramen noodles. Their offensive line was horrendous last year. Like oh, yeah. that, they're, like, uh, that, and, and the Steelers have their line coach, so that's yes. great. Also, so, Cam Irving's their blind side, which is a big. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't great. So let's put a button on this. Uh, we're saying that under no circumstance were Baker Mayfield play a game for the Browns, and essentially, whatever teams that were interested in Deshaun Watson. Those are going to be the same teams that are interested in Baker Mayfield. Is that what we're Yeah, saying? but like, what, what about the Saints? They were really interested in Deshaun Watson. Well, how they come they're James. not in rumored? They have Jameis. Right, but I'm saying, how, would you rather have famous you know. Jameis or Baker Mayfield? Jameis Winston. I'd have Jameis because at the same thing, he's been marinated in that system for years. But he's also showed flashes of brilliance last year. He's well, He'd be an elite quarterback if he stopped turning the ball over. Let's be real. Well, he did he's got the laser, arm. He's so. got just the the break, the athletic ability. He's got the instincts. It's just he throws way too many picks. His decision making is suspect. He I'd has elite Baker. level workouts. I'll tell you that. I I expect him to be. You ever see that guy that works out in the gym with like the he's on the bike on top of the squat rack? Like I expect Jameis to be doing that this <laughs> off season. Jameis does have some interesting. Workouts. I'm checking the tweet. Who's the best tight end of all time? We got a lot of Tony Gonzalez, a lot of Shannon Sharps, Ozzy, Ozzy Newsom. Ozzy Newsom. And, Ozzie and Newsom was a great tight end and great executive. And well. a lot of Gronks, yep. one Antonio Gates. Okay, we're going to keep this thing moving forward, though. Uh, right here we have Congress is now getting <laughs> involved <laughs> with grilling. The Washington Commanders, five or three. You guys want to set this one up? What's going on? Five, take this away, brother. 
Uh, so I don't know what is exactly happening. Why is Congress? We have got so many problems <laughs> as a country right now. Gas is eight fifty, eight fifty a gallon. Uh, inflation is through the roof. Like our money doesn't mean crap anymore. Um, we we can't supply solve. chain's a hot mess. We right. can't fly because all yeah. the flights are getting delayed. Food, yeah, F flying is terrible. Everyone's arguing over the Second Amendment, and Congress is like, you know what we need to do? You know, what? we need to look into the thing that everyone loves, the NFL. We need to investigate. I think it's around what minority hiring is that what this is? I think it's it's is? not just no. that. I think around. it's about the, uh, harassment in the workplace. I'm just saying, what is it? I have no idea what it's about harassment in the workplace. I've it's about this. I, that's it's why because okay. I represent the common man. Tom, take it away. American Go for it, buddy. Go oh, for it. Perna. Nobody Perna knows just did a what video this is this. about. Something okay. about Dan Snyder. Hold on. Dropped a video Hold like an hour and This is like the fifties. Five coming after the commies. Relax, Brandon. Can you take it? Why is Congress investigating the Washington? Well, game? Perna, just make Brandon, something up. Set us up. Set, take it away. Yeah, somebody that knows, please explain this. Dude, to Adam's credit, this is very confusing. If you look at what they're trying to figure out. And uh, there's a great uh, article The Athletic posted with the timeline of everything that's happened. And you will just be scrolling for days and days of Dan Snyder and the Washington football team. They are talking to Roger Goodell. They just talked to Roger Goodell. That was great. Mm -hmm. And it was great. They him well done. Yeah. Even though Congress made a – half of them made a joke about it by asking oh, yeah. him – Dumb questions about Dave Portnoy and, other right. stuff. and they, did they ask that him for tickets? Were yeah. they like, "Hey Roger, can you set us up with some so, box seats?" What, hey Roger, do you feel deflated right about now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the the the? <laughs> it's confusing because the NFL did an investigation of the Washington football team, and they're investigating Dan Snyder and the hostile work environment that was created there, which contains sexual uh, well there's now there's a sexual assault allegation against dan snyder that's wrapped up in all of this that he paid 1.6 million dollars uh for back in 2020 uh sexual misconduct sexual harassment in the workplace and the reasons being investigated is because the nfl's investigation they refused to release. Remember, we we're we we're chanting right, release, right, the right, right, right. That's release the email. Right. They're never going to release the email. Release their have findings. To do a federal subpoena. It's the only and way. And they believe that the NFL is not holding Dan Snyder accountable for what actually transpired, and they are trying to learn as much about that, and essentially, I think, force the NFL to actually punish Dan Snyder in an appropriate way. And in digging all this up is when we learned about Dan Snyder possibly stealing money from the rest of the owners, which is why if, like a month ago, we're like, oh, this is going to be the thing that actually sinks Dan Snyder. And Goodell went and testified because Congress asked him to. Uh, Snyder refused to show up, and now they are <laughs> going yep, he's, to uh, apparently Snyder to force him to testify. Apparently, so, cruising on a yacht in, outside the shores of France is more so, important than his football team. <laughs> TLDR, <laughs> what you're saying is the NFL basically is not holding Washington accountable. And so now Congress is doing a deep dive saying, show us what you found, NFL. Is that yes. do I have that right? Yes. Here's the way you get to it. Here's what you say to them right now. Look, you're going to release those emails or we're shedding your antitrust. So but somebody those, else that, does that. I That's don't think so. I don't think so. Goodell is, has been parrying all these questions like, psh, psh, get out of here. Goodell is too powerful. He's powerful than half of Congress, more powerful than half of Congress. He said anyways. he has no power. Dan he has zero but, power. Yes, but I'm just saying, if Shut he goes up. back and back to his offices, he's like, yeah, uh, make sure none of those people ever get reelected again. Like, I'm just saying, Goodell and the NFL is very powerful. No, I don't suicide think via uh, ever, to the back of the ever get released. The Clinton special.
Yes. This is like what they did. When, remember when they did steroids in baseball? They were like, you all get in here. You got to stop having steroids. Have steroids been ousted from baseball? No. Yeah. No. No. Do we nobody, have any, nobody did any more, we have any more NFL news that we want to touch on before we move on? The we Ravens, have... man. I feel oh, so yeah. bad. Can we... Oh, yes. man. So for Two those, the same uh, day. Yeah. Uh, so same day. basically, we lost Tony Siragusa, uh from the Ravens. And we also lost, I believe, Jalen. Jalen Ferguson. Uh, Jalen Ferguson as well. Uh, so if you guys would like to pay your respects in the chat right now, it would be an appropriate time to do that. Yeah, but I'll... for you guys to – um, anyone who knows or, or saw these people play, you guys want to talk about these people, uh, how they were on the field, if you remember them. Anyone yeah. want to take I, this? I, re I Tony Siragusa was a beast. But I remember like, watching a lot of Tony Siragusa, especially being a Raven Steelers fan. That dude was a pain in the ass to play against. He was a just physical shit wrecker. He destroyed <laughs> offensive lines. He had this larger than life personality that's shown throughout, like even the Super Bowl runs. Some like uh, I think it was the first. Uh, first uh hard knocks i think the first one was in baltimore like saragusa was just like he just uh, did not give a shit he was just like yeah whatever i mean it, 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 talk to me about being a rookie and then you'll be fine because i mean dude was a pit alum i mean he played seven years for the colts beforehand people tend to forget that i tend to forget that yeah but he he shown in baltimore he was still pretty good i think he was still like a sideline reporter for fox if i remember correctly so, I remember he did an opening skit to the 2000 Super Bowl, like as it was like a Godfather type skit um, with him and Michael Strahan, and then they went out and proceeded to crush the Giants into minced garlic. And uh, he was just a like yeah, like I said, he was a beast. And then he was great as a sideline reporter. I think what was funny was his second year or his first year of being a sideline reporter. You could clear, you could clearly tell that he was just winging it there, like we do on this show. <laughs> and it was funny. It was really funny. He was just like there would be some awkward moments where he didn't know how to get out of the segment. But for the most of it, like, I it it, it was pretty much that way his entire career as a sideline reporter. But I loved it. I thought yeah, it was great. I, my most most of my memories of him are as a sideline reporter. If yeah. I'm being like completely honest, it was just to me in my mind, it was just some dude who I could relate to because he wasn't all buttoned up like these other reporters. He wasn't like the stereotypical sideline reporter. It was the goose on the right. sideline. So uh, rest in peace. Tony Syracuse and also Jalen Ferguson. So what? Well. I I don't understand what happened to Ferguson. What they don't I know yet. They, they don't know. Oh, okay. It's just it's it's just it's yeah. up in here. Yeah, crazy. Syracuse. So there's nothing there. I'm guessing it might be heart related because I saw this interview yesterday when he did on Howard Stern where yeah. his dad died at 48 of a heart attack. Plus yeah. he was a bigger dude himself. So it's Dang. it's kind of creepy. So he mentioned like, hey, if I die, don't feel bad for me. Just bury me, play some Sinatra, call it a day. So that's probably what's going to happen. Absolutely. We're going to transition, though, from NFL down to college football. I don't know if any of you guys Ooh, saw Arch big story. Manning. Arch Manning. Arch Manning. To Texas. Committed. <laughs> Texas, to yeah. Do you University. realize how relevant that program so is? So first of all, we got two things to talk about. First of all, Arch Manning commits – to the University of Texas. That's A. B, the University of Ohio was awarded the trademark for the word the, the, the Ohio State. They got the trademark for <laughs> the. Okay. Let's start with Arch Manning, though. Legacy. Okay. Eli, Payton, Archie, now Arch. He chooses Texas, though, not Ole Miss, not Hottie Toddy. Uh, five, what are we thinking? Isn't he Cooper's son, right? He's not yeah, Peyton he's or – so he doesn't have the Peyton or Eli it's genes. It's the name, though. It's the so name. It's, it is Manning. It must be tough. I, I, I Listen, 
He's going to be in the SEC dealing with some insane level defenses. Oh, baby. Speed, he better have speed on us. That was what Archie was known for, was for running. I The one clip that I saw of Arch was against some very weak high school competition. Um, but you can't blame him for who he had to play. Mm -hmm. I just know that no matter who you are, whether your last name is Manning or Tebow or whatever, it's hard playing in the SEC, and it's going to be tough for him. So, Dude, he's going congrats. to light it up. He is Brandon, he's what, are just, what are you, what are you think, seeing, Brandon? He is son of Cooper Manning, noted as the most athletic Manning there ever was, but had to or end his playing career because of spinal stenosis. He was mm -hmm. a wide receiver, not even a quarterback, guys. So, one, think about Peyton Manning, but being able to run. That's who Arch Manning is going to be. The real, the real question is how many records will Arch Manning break <laughs> in college? And also, I think this is strategic by the Manning's plan to take over the world. Each Manning is going to a different college. Therefore, they are building a fan base in a new state. None of them ever played in Texas, so they get one of the biggest states now to support Smart. One more of their family members. They've got Ole Miss. They've got Tennessee. They've got Colorado. They've got Indiana. 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 They've got New York <laughs> City. The Mannings are planning to basically become awesome, the longest running presidential dynasty of the United States of America. So they're the new Kennedys. And they're going to switch parties it's every Camelot. other election. Right, right. I wouldn't be mad. Be. I wouldn't be mad of uh, the Mannings governing uh, the United States of America. Tom, what are we thinking? Arch Manning, new legacy. Is Texas back? No. <laughs> All I'm going to say is I want a commercial okay. with Matthew McConaughey and okay. Arch Manning just driving down a deserted highway in just some... Matthew McConaughey voiceover, and then that's it. There's no explanation. What are There's they no talking context about? Whatsoever. Oh, it's like one of those weird Lincoln commercials. Yep, but it's, it's a Lincoln like... commercial. Mm. Yep, mm. and then they're like, mm. no horns or whatever they say. Hook them, hook them, hook them, hook them, sure, horns. whatever. Yeah. Hook them, go. Uh, During the commercial, I, he announces I've his seen... transfer to A and M. Say it again. And then after the commercial ends, he announces his transfer to AM or USC. Uh, that's, it's very possible. All I've been seeing online is basically a whole bunch of people saying, look, y'all are hyping this man up a lot. He's not as good as y'all say he is. Look at this. So we'll see. We will see how it plays out. Uh, moving on, though. The Do you think? Oh, wait. Oh, go ahead. Ohio State University okay, yes. awarded the trademark uh, for the letter the when you the think letter. of the word the i'm sorry the word the when you think of the do we think ohio state university yes. the yes or here's here's where it comes oh, into question spongebob you got miami you got the u right so are they not allowed to say the u how about are the they just university u? of notre dame the are they you the Penn state university the Penn you. State, like the like then how you how you, you uh trademark the most probably the most used word in the dictionary besides <laughs> a right a and the the ohio state so i can't be the university of of alabama i can't, I can't be, be the, the urinating tree i yes. can't no one can say i can't be the five points vids what about the try guys is this uh -huh. just for college teams uh, how does this so work basically the way trademarks works are they're in different classes. So this is probably within the I, I didn't look at the trademark, but it might be within the clothing class. So oh. it could be you can't have a the when you're talking about another sports team, or I'm not really entirely sure. It could be in a different class altogether. I'm not what sure. What about the lady volunteers? That's right? actually interesting. Like Do they sue for uh -huh. the Batman? Hmm. I mean, it Ooh. depends which class it which class it's in. But when you think, I don't know. Is there anything else like this in sports with sports teams where it's like a word that describes 12, the, 12th the 12th man? 12th man. 12th man. Who do you yeah. think? Are we thinking Seattle? 
Well, no, that was Texas A and M that actually. So had the 12th man. Seattle, that's why Seattle had to change to the twelves. Yes, because so they no, changed back to the twelfth man paid. because they actually paid for it now. Yeah, they paid. It's only a money. applies to clothing, basically. Clothing is what clothing. I'm reading. Oh, okay. It okay, so to merch. What? Well, so you can make the you coffee? Is that what it's saying? Yeah. yeah. About the bench warmer brew. Yeah. The you better have a shirt bench on it. Good, good plot. So here's good plot. here's a question, and then we can. Uh, this might be a short episode. We might end early today, unless you guys would like to talk about anything else. No, we Before we, we end with the NBA, but um. What the heck? It literally just left me. What I was about Sorry, to say. Because I said we all suck. <laughs> it just left me. Um. So then let's go ahead and transition to our final topic. Shailene, Shailene, Sh- Had to bring it back, baby. Heck our yeah. final topic of the day. The Orlando Magic getting ready in a couple of hours to select the number Oof. one draft pick. Are you guys following? Do you guys are you aware of the top couple of picks who could be taken? Do you care at all about the NBA? Tom. Uh I think uh you know the first overall pick for the uh, NBA is probably going to come down to uh, Isaiah Thomas or it's probably going to be Michael Jordan. Uh could be uh, uh Reggie Wayne, but you know I'm really liking that kid out of Utah. I think uh, he's gonna he's gonna take it to the shooter. He's gonna uh, score a goal and uh, round a Jack Daniels for everybody. Absolutely hmm. five. Wow. What's your analysis? Uh, the the Knicks are picking at eleven. They better take somebody from the Balkan Peninsula. That's all I have to say. Like if he's Serbian or whatever, I don't care as long as he's from. If he you enjoys weird. Um, weird horror movies, and and his last name ends in IC. Put him on the team. So you're a Knicks fan, not a Nets fan. No, uh, God, no. No, no, no. When he was fan. growing up, nobody's the Nets were in Nets New Jersey. Fan. Not they're out of no. That's someone who lives in New York. Nobody's a Nets no, that's fan. Fair. That's I am fair. a fan of the team that gave Allen Houston twenty seven million dollars, and he never played a dollar a, a game again. I, that's I that's relate. my team. Listen, that that's my Grant Hill. Okay, tree. Mm-hmm. Who's your NBA team, and who do you want them to pick? I don't really have an NBA team. I grew up liking the Raptors when I was younger. So, unfortunately, I don't know that much about it. They're probably picking mid to late teens. Um, main thing is I really don't know anything about the NBA draft. So, um, That's fair. A- any guess that I make is just going to be an educated guess. I know Chet Holmgren's supposed to be one of the top prospects in this draft. So, I hope he goes to the Magic and flops so I can <laughs> laugh at Scooter a little more. So, you know what? I'm cool with that. Okay. Like listen, everyone else that goes to Gonzaga. Listen, you can come over. You can be a Magic fan. We are taking applications right now. If you don't have a team, now's the time to get on the bandwagon. Dynasty starts in two years. Who are the Denver Nuggets selecting, Brandon Perna? Have you been following at all? Who do you want, if anyone? Well, they pick at 21. So okay. I have no idea who they'd be selecting there. What I want them to do is trade away that pick in an attempt to acquire a star, somebody that will take him over the top. Maybe old Dame Lillard from the Portland Trailblazers. Can we get a guy who can shoot and stay healthy to pair with Nikola Jokic? Maybe even, uh, I don't know, Bradley Beal just declined his uh, $36.4 million player option, wants to go play for a winner. Come to Denver, Bradley. Come you get Kevin Denver. Durant. Denver sure actually is available. a great team. Like that's a good young team over there. We gave y'all uh, Aaron Gordon. So yeah, he's been great. And they've been like they got into the postseason without Jamal Murray and MPJ. So they'll be better just by getting Jamal Murray back. But if they can grab one more piece, unstoppable. Yeah, uh, Nuggets, a uh, a great young team. We, in I don't the care NBA about right money. Now. It's it's kind of unfortunate you guys are in the money. West because it's going to be hard to get out of the West. But I like that that team over there. I also like that y'all gave us Bull Bull shouts out. <laughs> now it comes to the Orlando Magic. Who do I want? It's really between three people. It's between Paulo Boncaro. It's between Chet Holmgren, and it's between who I think the Orlando Magic are going to draft who 
all the outlets are saying the Orlando Magic <clears throat> is going to draft Jabari Smith. It's who I'm expecting in two hours and ten minutes for the Orlando Magic. Is this one of those weaker drafts where there's like no clear number one where you don't no, really – it's not no. that it's a weaker draft. It's just that there is no clear number one okay. because – one, two, three, and four could literally all be all stars. Or so it's, yeah. it's going to be based on need, is what you guys should take Paulo. You should take uh -huh. Paulo. So they're, they're basically, hey I would be happy with Paulo, Chet, or Jabari. I just coolest have... name. Also, Napoleon is part of his name. It, it is Paulo Napoleon. Oh my God. I got to look it up. Damn it. Look it up. Yeah. What's his full name? Paulo Napoleon James Boncaro. <laughs> yes. Hey. So Italian, I don't look Italian American player make it him but a guy. What a cha cha. Let me say it up for you. If you have no idea what's going on tonight in the NBA draft, this is what you need to know for the top three. Chet Holmgren, unicorn like player. No one like him. There's Son no of Mike one Holmgren. Like him. He could be like a, a better Porzingis. Way better Porzingis. Okay. <laughs> That's Porzingis Chet for all oh, the crap. There. Wow. You know, like how he talked all that crap. He had one good season and then he got traded out to Dallas in a surprise move. And then he's just not as good as, you know, he's injured again. He's, he's so that's uh, why some people did all right are his first like three skeptical. games in Washington. Some people yeah. look at Porzingis and say, we don't want to draft another Porzingis. No. So that's why some people are cold on Chet because they're saying, this is just another Porzingis. Just another one. Okay. Well, also, his remember, name is uh, that happened with Lamar Jackson. Remember, like they didn't want to draft another RG three. That's why he fell so far on the draft. Then you that's have true. That's true. That is true. Then you have Paulo Boncaro, six foot ten. This is like a score. Okay, we're talking like Carmelo Anthony player comp. This is a Carmelo Anthony who's six foot ten. This is Chet. Want, this is and the that, guy you want. That is not a number one overall pick. And that's I'm, I'm Chet just telling right you. there. He looks one like he's a computer programmer in the tech division entry level. <laughs> he's the guy who's calling you dangerous. about your extended warranty. Yeah. He looks and like one lastly, of the background characters in, t in 2K. Like, he, you just never – he doesn't get a speaking role in the my career. Victor Wemnabiyama. Some people mm. are cold on Chet because they don't like his attitude. He's Whoa. coming in hot. He's saying – Someone asked him, who's the best player in the NBA? Chet says, it's me, me when I get drafted. So Ooh, like a little so, dude, Josh you Rosen. For Gonzaga, you keep choking every single year. A little year. nine mistakes. The and best player is me. We have Dwayne Jabari Haskins, Smith. the league done messed up, and he was technically right. Yeah. Lastly, we have Jabari Smith, who I think the Magic will be drafting uh, because he fits our team perfectly. Uh, also six foot ten. But this is one of the best three-point shooters in the draft. He's shooting at 42%, long, super long, just turned 19, and I think he's going to be a stalwart wow. in our offense and defense. A, st so, a Dante stalwart. We will see. If there's nothing left, though, to discuss, anything you guys want to discuss? The Bucks uh, have pick number 24. They're going to pick a good person. Uh, just to wrap up, the uh, Austin Matthews won the MVP for the mm -hmm. NHL, which is called the Hart Trophy, and then mm -hmm. Igor Shesterkin won the Vesna, and um, Kale he's on McCarr, the Rangers. There Kale McCarr is. won the Norris Trophy, which is mm -hmm. best defenseman. Kale, and, uh, all hail, Kale. pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, there's all it is. Are you going to go to Game there, Five? Yeah, Wait you, should, you should make a video confirm about it. that they're going to give me luxury box because <laughs> tickets are a couple thousand dollars right and now. Also, if the lightning at, at this point, if we come back next week and the series is over, Tom will have jinxed both of our franchises, Scooter, by attending that game five between the lightning and the wow. Rangers. This is so, Tom. yeah, this is and he Tom. wore Packers unless, gear to it. Did unless you? he's going to surprise show up at the, in Colorado. <laughs> yes. I got a lot That's of why we lost in New York. In, at MSG, I was walking past. I was grabbing some food, and they're like, "Go pack!" I was like, "Let's go!" Oh, Let's Tom, where was your Patcast banner? Where was that was shown? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, that was that Raw or something? Yeah, right? it was AEW last night on Dynamite. It was the front mm -hmm. row. So Ron, nice. who has been a, a mod for quite some time, said he was going to AEW, got oh, front yeah. row, and had the sign. So yeah, Tom Grassi's all elite, baby. 
Let's go. Let's that was go. hilarious. I Let's saw a go. ton of people tweeting that. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> okay, so I forgot. So I had a punishment last week. It was to paint Bigfoot P.O.R. Erotica. But yes, yeah. Bigfoot. So do I have to order that book? Like what? No, you don't I have thought... to order the book. No. Oh. No. I thought so. Whoever gets punished this week has to get the book, and then they have to read it. So it's it's, it's a two part punishment. They got to read some passages. Yeah, okay. I would think it's best when you're painting just to give you like some inspiration. I think that yes. that would go really well. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll paint it as it's being read. Excellent. Perfect. All right, can we do the countdown so that we can get? Now presenting to you, Tom Grassi and the Flippy Floppy Flappy Gang. 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15, 4. I'm starting to run out of things that rhyme with four. It's really getting bad. We've been doing the show a lot. But that's okay because I'm gonna go take vitamins. That's not pot. It's just the Flintstones. Holly Shore. Got it. Nailed it. Door. Door. Okay, Ron. Right. I'll start right. off. I'm at 129 and 19 cents. Yes, wow. 82.95. Let's go, boys. 16.99. I'm saying 69.55. 53.08. Oh, what? Scoots got to read Goots. the erotica. Got to order Bigfoot erotica. <laughs> Bigfoot erotica. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Even better. So, like, here's the thing: Scooter has been putting on his channel and recently, right? And I saw it on the Twitters, like the memorizing of the Bible verses, right? That and it's right. read with a lot of enthusiasm. I'm just saying, I want that same energy when we're talking about Bigfoot, and be yeah. like, and he came out of the trees. Yeah. Y'all are weird. Uh, I will yeah, do Jesus, this. Say, Jesus broke bread. But Bigfoot's going to break your back. <laughs> Gosh. What have I gotten myself into? Before we close this out, let's go around and say what we're all going to be putting out on our channels recently. Uh, please pray for me for this challenge. I will be putting out game four and then the Orlando Magic reaction video tomorrow. Tom, what's coming out on your channel? Uh... I don't know. Tomorrow, GPS, Brandon Perry and I were ranking all 32 starter starting QBs in the NFL. Oh, so we're gonna rock with Puppy. We're ranking Hello. all dogs. Oh my god. Right. He Pop. loves you though, man. so much. Yeah, What's this dog's right, name? Like... Yeah, Coach that Saturday. Is Finn, yeah, that is the love of my life. And Finn? Uh, Finn. F I N N. Finn. And, uh, Can we get Finn I... in the comments? Stop yeah. playing. F-I-N-N. -N. This is my favorite doll ever. Okay, what's coming out on your channel, though? You should be putting oh, out compilations I'm, of Finn. After this um, show, I have a story about this minor league pitcher who was shot and killed uh, in 1995, and it's his teammate actually solved them. Oh, there's a pupper. Are, are our dogs related? They do uh, look similar. They do look very similar. Dude, stop smelling our snatch. No one ever Aww. covered the story. He's trying to grab the mic. They were replaced by the old Yep. And then there's the big guy right here. He's underneath the desk. He's like oh. 80 pounds. So. Are you talking about your penis? Oh, oh, that's a, oh, oh, look at that dog. Who's this? Oh, you're a big <laughs> bad dog. It's you're like, okay, let me dog. down, human. Oh, what happened? What happened? I know. What's his time. name? That's Dash. I just call him Moose, though. Moose. Dash. <laughs> okay. Moose. Uh, Brandon, what's coming out on your Incredible. channel? Stop lying. Uh, I just dropped the uh, a video today. A little Avs coverage, a little Dan Snyder coverage, a little Russell Wilson coverage. Tomorrow, I'm just ranking the QBs with Dom and then getting ready for the weekend, baby. Tree. Well, I just released a video of me being incredibly terrible at baseball. You should oh, yeah. watch it because it's just cringe in its purest form. And I feel like it best symbolizes how terrible I am at sports. So that's that's what I've been to. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. This has been Clickbait Sports. We will see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Goodbye. Same bat place. <laughs>